This mutual responsibility must be the foundation of our partnership. And today I will focus on four areas that are critical to the future of Africa and the entire developed world. Democracy, opportunity, health, and the peaceful resolution of conflict. First, we must support strong and sustainable democratic governments. As I, as I said in Cairo, each nation gives life to democracy in its own way and in line with its own traditions. But history offers a clear verdict. Governments that respect the will of their own people, that govern by consent and not coercion, are more, more prosperous, they are more stable and more successful than governments that do not. This is more than just holding elections. It's also about what happens between elections. You know, repression can take many forms, and too many nations, even those that have elections, are plagued by problems that can put people to poverty. You know, no country is going to create wealth if its leaders exploit the economy to enrich themselves. <laughs> or, or if police, police can be bought off by drug traffickers. No business, no business wants to invest in a place where the government skips 20% off the top. Or the head of the Port Authority is corrupt. No person wants to live in a society where the rule of law gives way to the rule of brutality and bribery. This, that is not democracy, that is tyranny, even if occasionally you sprinkle an election in there. And now is the time for that style of governance to end. In the 21st century, capable, reliable, and transparent institutions are the key to success. Strong parliaments, honest police forces, independent judges, an independent press, a urban private sector, a civil society. Those are the things that give life to democracy because that is what matters to people's everyday lives. Now, time and again, Ghanaians have chosen constitutional rule over autocracy and shown a democratic spirit that allows the empty of your people to break through. We see that in leaders who accept defeat graciously. The fact that President Mills' opponents were standing beside him last night to greet me when I came to the plane spoke volumes about Ghana. Voters who resist calls to wield power against the opposition in unfair ways. We see that spirit in just journalists like Anas, Arimea, Yeo Anas, who, who risked his life to report the truth. We see it in police like Patience Quay, who helped prosecute the first human trafficker in Ghana. We see it in the young people who are speaking against patronage and participating in the political process. Across Africa, we've seen countless examples of people taking control of their destiny and making change from the bottom up. We saw it in Kenya, where civil society and business came together to stop post-election violence. We saw it in South Africa, where over three-quarters of the country voted in the recent election, the fourth since the end of apartheid. We saw it in Zimbabwe, where the election support network braved brutal repression to stand up for the principle that a person's vote is their sacred right. Now, make no mistake, history is on the side of these brave Africans, not with those who use coups or change constitutions to say no. Africa, Africa doesn't need strong men. It needs strong institutions. Now, America will not seek to impose any system of government on any other nation. 
The essential truth of democracy is that each nation determ determines its own destiny. But what America will do is increase assistance for responsible individuals and responsible institutions with a focus on supporting good governance, on parliaments which take abuses of power and ensure that opposition voices are heard, on the rule of law which ensures the equal administration of justice, on civic participation so that young people get involved, and on concrete solutions to corruption, forensic accounting, and automating services, strengthening hotlines, protecting whistleblowers to advance transparency and accountability. And we provide this support. I have directed my administration to give greater attention to corruption in our human rights reports. People everywhere should have to start a business or get an education without paying a bribe. We have a responsibility to support those who act responsibly and to isolate those who don't. And that is exactly what America do. Now, this leads directly to our second area of partnership, supporting development that provides opportunity for more people. With get better governments, I have no doubt that Africa holds the promise of a broader base of prosperity. Witness the extraordinary success of Africans in my country, America. They're doing very well. So they've got the talent, they've got the entrepreneurial spirit. The question is, how do we make sure that they're succeeding here in their home countries? The continent is rich in natural resources. And from cell phone entrepreneurs to small farmers, Africans have shown the capacity and commitment to create their own opportunities. But old habits must also be broken. Dependence on commodities or a single export has a tendency to concentrate wealth in the hands of the few and leaves people too vulnerable to downturns. So Ghana, for instance, oil brings great opportunities. And you have been very responsible in preparing for new revenue. But as so many Ghanaians know, oil cannot simply become the new cocoa. From South Korea to Singapore, history shows that countries thrive when they invest in people and in their infrastructure, when when they promote multiple export industries, develop a skilled workforce, and create space for small and medium-sized businesses that create jobs. As Africans reach for this promise, America will be more responsible in extending our hand. By cutting costs that go to Western consultants, and administration, we want to put more resources in the hands of those who need it, while training people to do more for themselves. And that's why our $3.5 billion security initiative is focused on new methods and technologies for farmers, not simply sending American producers or goods to Africa. Now, aid is not an end in itself. The purpose of foreign assistance be creating the conditions where it's no longer needed. I want to see Ghanaians not only self-sufficient in food, I want to see you exporting food to other countries and earning money. You can do that. Now, America can also do more to promote trade and investment. Wealthy nations must open our doors to goods and services from Africa in a meaningful way. That will be a commitment of my administration. And where there is good benefits, we can broaden prosperity through public-private partnerships that invest in better roads and electricity, capacity building that trains people to do business, financial services that reach not just cities, but also the poor and rural areas. This is also in our own interests. For if people are lifted out of poverty and wealth is created in Africa, guess what? markets will open up for our own goods. So it's good for both. Now one area that holds out both undeniable peril and extraordinary promise is energy. Africa gives up less greenhouse gas than any other part of the world, but it is the most threatened by climate change. A warming planet will spread disease, shrink water resources, 
and deplete crops, creating conditions that produce more famine, more conflict. All of us, particularly the developed world, have a responsibility to slow these trends through mitigation and by changing the way that we use energy. But we can also work with Africans to turn this crisis into opportunity. Together, we can partner on behalf of our planet and prosperity and help countries increase access to power while skipping, leapfrogging the dirtier phase of development. Think about it. Across Africa, there is bountiful wind and solar power, geothermal energy and biofuel. From the Rift Valley to the North African deserts, from the western coasts to South Africa's crops, Africa's balanced natural gifts can generate its own power.